After 40 years of failed attempts, scientists in America are hailing a major breakthrough. They finally managed to use IVF to breed dogs. These seven test tube puppies have been born to a surrogate mother using three parents. What's important is that one day it could all help in the treatment of human diseases, as Danny Sinhar explains. After 40 years of trying, meet the world's first test tube puppies. Experiencing the usual sibling rivalry, all seven of these little fellas came from the same litter, but they have three sets of parents. Frozen embryos were implanted in a female dog using techniques similar to those used in humans. IVF is also important for the health of our pets because it opens up the possibility that we could identify certain genes that cause disease and then fix those, replace them with a good copy of the gene before those dogs are even born. The reason why it's taken so long for IVF to happen in dogs is because their reproductive cycle is different to other animals. Now scientists say this latest breakthrough could allow them to save endangered breeds. It could also prevent all those common diseases that make our pooches sick. No more eye defects for collies, whilst golden retrievers prone to cancer could be thrown a bone. And it could even help us too. Dog shares in common with us many heritable conditions, so many things that we could potentially treat the dog embryo for uh, would also be relevant uh, to the human condition, we hope. Uh, so it's, it's very much a biomedical test bed, if you like. And on that basis, it's incredibly important for human medicine. In time, these dogs could be the medical breakthrough for both veterinary and human medicine. A man's best friend like never before. Danny Sinha, Five News. With me now is Sean Wensley, who's the president of the British Veterinary Association. Sean, what do you think about this? I think the, the research is to be welcomed. Of course, we welcome science and research um, into anything that might go on to improve both animal and human welfare and well-being. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I guess, of course, any new technology like this, any new breakthrough like this, uh, we do keep an eye on the ethics. Um, I think there are different motivations for doing this in animals than people. Um, IVF has been used very successfully now in people to help bring children to families who've gone on to enjoy uh, having young children. Yes. Um, in animals, I think there's a slightly different motivation. There are potential applications in understanding inherited disease in ourselves in animals. Uh, I've heard about some of the potential implications and benefits to conserve endangered species. Yes. all to be welcomed, but just keeping a, a critical eye on the, on the ethics as well, because it is an invasive clinical procedure. Uh, we oughtn't forget that. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you mentioned it. We've had it in humans for quite a long time now. It, it, it's strange that it's more complicated in dogs, but it's essentially because they only come on heat twice a year. Yeah, I mean, I think there are just some um, differences in the reproductive physiology uh, of dogs compared to people. That's one of them. Um, there are other intricacies, um, such as uh, it can be difficult just because of the, the, the darkness, uh, I believe, of um, canine eggs to see some of the internal structures. Yeah. So, you, you know, it, it's, it's more of a challenge, uh, and I think that's why it's taken a relatively long period to achieve this. And you touch on the ethical challenges as well. I mean, animals have been cloned before, so in terms of protecting species, endangered ones, why is this even necessary if you can do that kind of thing? Yeah, so cloning, uh, you're absolutely right, is uh, another um, reproduction uh, linked area that we keep a close ethical eye on. Um, I think the main issue here is where it's been suggested that this new technology could go on to help us eradicate harmful genes in dog populations. We already have some really effective um, screening, gene screening tests, which uh, are widely available and would certainly have more of a, an impact currently at a population level. They would help farm more dogs um, and we would urge owners, and particularly breeders who are thinking of breeding dogs, mm. to access those tests. And that's okay. existing techno technology, which would really benefit from greater uptake uh, of, of what we already have. Okay. Sean, many thanks indeed. Good to see you. Thank you.